Did you know Mike Matei, he wrote a whole thing, like a list of reasons why he left gigantic YouTube comment. Uh, shall I read it to you? Sure. And there are like 90 reasons I stopped doing James and Mike Mondays. When enough issues mount up, it's like time to stop doing this thing. Bullet point one. I wanted to try and stream every day like other people that got into live streaming. The commute takes quite a while and the traffic sucked. Well, we all know that that's legit. The only thing is, is didn't wasn't James going to his house more often than the other way around? Maybe that's why <laughs> James didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the commute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was a pandemic that made it hard to film and edit. You know, after a few months, the two of them could do a PCR and, and yeah. be done with we, it, right? Yeah, we filmed during COVID. I mean, not in the initial, not in the initial part. We that's why the 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 bag trash episode exists, but. You know, after a while, you you get guidelines about how to interact with each other. <laughs> the audience wasn't happy either way. If we practice, they were unhappy. If we don't practice, they are unhappy. So I, he talked about this on his actual stream. He said that people would get annoyed if they like wh- they were playing Dennis the Menace, and if they didn't know about some game mechanic or something, everybody would yell at them like, "Read the manual before you play the game, or practice before you play the game." You, you don't want to spend the whole video uh, not knowing a basic thing about the game. Then he would practice like, and know a lot about the game. I think he would stream it in advance of James and Mike Mondays. And then he'd go over there and he would kind of do that like exhaustive thing where he was trying to explain to James, you know, how the game's meant to work. Um, and James wouldn't give a fuck. And so then you know, <laughs> people thought that it was like too in-depth at that point. I think that this is a little bit childish of Mike um, to be defeatist about that particular. It's like, well, your audience is millions of people. And yeah. Anytime there's millions of people, one will people will say things that contradict one another. Yeah, I can't even imagine having that volume because even when we get a flood of comments, they're just they could become chaotic and yeah, and some love you, some hate you, some you 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 don't know what to think, you don't know what criticism is actually real. Filming some of the games took many hours, and James had less time because now he has kids to take care of. Okay. Okay. You know, well, we've covered that topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. No comment. I, 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 I dare say that's the primary reason. Doing it every single Monday got hard to keep up with. I imagine I used to, when I used to watch that stuff, I was like, who's editing all this? Cause they're pretty complicated edits. You know, you have the yeah, game footage. Cool. You have to sync that up with the, I mean, it's like, a, it, it looks like a big project. Yeah. Let's, um, let's plays are pretty much more intense than just like streaming. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And they tried to they tried to make it tight and only go to the highlights and stuff. It was a race to figure out four games that worked well for the show. Not every game I'd try was doable for whoops. For uh, a let's play like we couldn't do something like Willow because it would take many hours and there was only so many hours to film when we had to film four in a day. So it was less stressful to stream where I can play as long as I like. Well, again, he you could stream that stuff and then you could do the shorter stuff with James, which is what he did. Yeah. We'd have to edit around getting demonetized, which was extremely time consuming. You never knew what BS YouTube was going to ding you for. And then the video is marked yellow and you have to re-edit the video over and over again. Totally legit. But that's more like complaining about being on YouTube generally. Yeah. Generally. Yeah. Like he might not want to be a YouTuber. And he, and I feel like, you know how the game grumps where they were, let's, plays they have part one part two part three of things you could do longer games that way you know do yeah, and they did do that so yeah i don't i think it's more like james couldn't hang in there for any of it <laughs> um for me doing the let's plays was really time consuming and taking away a lot of time that i wanted to be streaming i had to pick out games that were right for the show so that my uh, that meant my streams had to be a hunt for what to play next instead of just playing whatever i wanted and that was frustrating then after it got edited, I had to watch each one and sometimes ask for changes so that that was more time having to go over each one with a fine tooth comb because the editors didn't always know everything we knew. So, yeah. So, OK, so he wasn't always editing then. Hmm. So I had to manage that, which was more time away from streaming, sitting, watching every episode and taking. He doesn't notes want to manage that. slobs. He doesn't want to manage slobs. Yeah. <laughs> See? It was a pain in the ass. I have to I have to do none of that stuff with streaming. It's so much better. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. The videos weren't getting views unless we made awful thumbnails with dumb mouth agape faces, outlines and arrows, and it was embarrassing. 
but we also didn't want the video to not get picked up by the stupid ass algorithm BS. Again, this guy doesn't want to be on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds like it. He's like, I just had it. I want to be on Twitch. We had to film at my house a lot because I kept my gaming tech because I stream. This is the funniest one. So they, he said, I, we had to film at my house because I actually have good gaming tech, which meant a lot of the time James would have to come to my house. Uh, to film. I would rather shot the show in the nerd room, but when everything flipped around 2015 to capture cards, the nerd nerd room became outdated. Fixing every console, modding stuff, RGB cables, component, et cetera, et cetera. takes a ton of time. It's something I work on all the time at my house. So to update the nerd room, I would have to work on that every single day, practically ordering equipment, hooking up stuff, contacting modders. And I tried updating some stuff. I bought a laptop for the room. I bought some consoles, but there are like 50 consoles that would need to be re- rebought, remodded, all new cables. Not to mention the room is not nearly big enough to do all that. The room needs to be five times bigger than it is <laughs> in a small garage. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so updating the room is kind of not feasible. Really, it needs to begin with moving it to a much larger space. And that wasn't happening. <laughs> Why not uh, build yeah. a fucking set? build it inside Justin's butt. Yes. Get a studio. <laughs> Come on. Man. Like it was a screen wave doing. We take. Money. Yeah, exactly. They could be negotiating all the, they could just get like a, you know, one of those Mr. Systems or whatever that plays a bunch of stuff and emulate it. Basically. Yeah. One of our, one of our discord friends was disgusted by this paragraph. He was just like, it's all that hard. Just <laughs> get a Mr. Come on. Uh, So it became James had to come to my place because I have all the equipment updated, which, by the way, undermines the um, the commute thing. Yeah, at least for him. And it's a pain in the ass for him to drive over to my place. Ah, okay. so that's what we mean by commute. I don't blame him. (laughs) I don't blame him for that. Like two hours at least is just doing that more with the traffic. So by the time he is here, he's half burnt out from the drive. Oh, poor Jamesy. I, I used to commute. I mean, you commute to Boston currently. Daily. I used to commute to Boston two times a week and it took over two hours. It's what you do for work. I did it for 15 <laughs> years uh, back and forth every day to Boston. Yeah. It, was, it fucking sucked. Um, then we got to then we got to pretend to be perky. Same for me. After I was stuck in traffic for an hour and a half. I have to pretend I'm all happy to play Spider-Man on Atari or whatever. And I'm pissed. I was uh, behind some old bitch driving 14 miles an hour. (laughs) There's a lot more. You get the idea. I like filming the Let's Play with James, but it's a lot less stressful to do them less often. We still do them here and there on this channel if we get a chance, but I'm mostly focused on streaming. Um, Sounds like a veiled. I don't really like working with James. (laughs) Yeah. And yeah, I think he doesn't like to be that involved. Uh, yeah, with him personally, I think <laughs> the way he's doing now is capturing game footage and sending notes for AVGN episodes. I think that's about as much as he could handle. Well, that's the thing. It's like, oh yeah, there's, there's a, some other note that's going around where he was like, "No, like I'm not back. I it's informal. I, I think he's just trying to keep it informal." But you're right. It's like it's still like, well, Mike will help and like get some game footage for us every now and then. Like, uh, you know, he did more than get game footage. He fucking like, is he getting paid? Like, what is it? He must yeah. be getting paid. It's not, be. That's why I hate when it's like called help. <laughs> you get help. Right. It's like, no, it's not help. It's <laughs> working for him. Because, again, like like if you have to like go to your friend for help, but you've hired a whole company to help you. Um, and they can't like get some game footage for you. And the thing is, is like, you're not going to go through Mike's 16 hours of game footage and find the jokes and write that no. he is finding the jokes because it's the player who has to go through the experience of feeling, you know, all of the pain of the game and stuff. It's like, yeah, he's sending you jokes. Come on. Enough of the bullshit. Yeah, I it's 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 this weird illusion that he's trying to you know, maintain, which doesn't make sense. You, you, I think you can explain it to people and people be like, oh yeah, makes sense. <laughs> you don't have to be like, I do everything, but I get help. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Every once in a while, if Mike feels like it, he helps, you know, like, come on. Um, but yeah, so it does, it does beg the question of like, why did, why does Mike 
why is he like separated from Cinema Massacre? It probably just comes down to like he just doesn't want to feel obligated. Yes. Like he want he wants to have the option, you know. He, yeah, he wants to hold them at a distance, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it sounds like he he didn't want to be part of the YouTube meat grinder anymore. And um, I kind of get that. Like be like just being stuck in like the cycle of uploading, um, stream just sitting there streaming, playing a game. Sounds good to him. Eating some McDonald's, drinking a Grimace shake. <laughs> so it seems like as Screenwave tr- attempts to diversify outside of um, James, they're the ones behind um, a sort of Shredder's Revenge style Toxic Crusaders beat em up video game. So I think what happened there, I actually think a lot of people are, have been critical of it. I, I actually think it's pretty smart. They went to a company, Troma, that's pretty small, that they already had a relationship with via James. And it sounds to me like they were able to get the license to make a game that could kind of compete or at least capitalize on the success of a Shredder's Revenge type game with a property that's actually obtainable to them. Yes. Um, and uh, the game looks pretty, pretty decent. And so I've toxic, always been Toxic Crusaders. You're talking Toxic about? Crusaders. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. So it was the Saturday morning spinoff of Toxic Avenger, which is one of those things that makes it was like like the Rambo cartoon we were talking about, like some rated R thing that turns into a cartoon. It's fucked up. <laughs> Um, yeah, because like toxic ooze and ooze and things were were lighting the children's cartoon space on fire. So, I mean, why not why not make to- Toxy a uh, a lovable Saturday morning cartoon? Yeah, and I I remember reading in Lloyd's book that um, Avenger was considered too violent a uh, a name, which makes no sense <laughs> considering you have Marvel's The Avengers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they went with Crusaders <laughs> instead. The toxic Which crusaders. crusaders, like Crusaders, are like I don't know. They when yeah, I don't know. They're pretty. It doesn't have religious themselves. overtones, kind There's of religious overtones, and yeah, they're very violent themselves. <laughs> <laughs> but trauma. I I wish I knew exactly what happened, but I think what happened because you know, Lloyd was vague posting about it, like a teen. He was like, "Fuck YouTube" and stuff. But uh, I think. YouTube banned Troma off of their platform. <clears throat> and I remember years ago, like early YouTube, they uploaded most of their library for free, just straight up. Cannibal Musical, Toxic Avenger, Tromeo and Juliet, all these, for them, high value properties, you know, movies by Trey Parker and James Gunn. Um, they put <laughs> them all up for free on YouTube for a long time because they were really big on like file sharing and fuck DMCA and right. give it away. I, I think maybe in early internet, that kind of like open access thing was really good for them. It, it's what got their brand out there. But yeah, I would say like circa 2009, like it stops, you know, you, you have to make sure that people are <laughs> paying for your stuff um, or else you're just devaluing it. Um, right. But anyway, the point is, is that they were uploading these movies and um, these are X rated, you know, style films um, some of the most horrific shit you can imagine in some cases, <laughs> like with blood sucking freaks and movies like that. And I don't know if they got grandfathered in or what, or if that's even the content that got banned. But all I know is that trauma has been kicked off. They're pissed off about it. Newt said something about like screen wave should have stuck up for them or something. I'm like, yeah, I don't know right. if there's any defense for putting that shit on YouTube. Subscribe to Red Cow Entertainment on Patreon for full episodes every other week.